Hey everyone, this is Brad and today I will be working on lab uh, 2.3, what shape is that in uh, unit 2. So uh, we'll actually be going over inputs and conditionals in this one, uh, a break from the loops that we've been working on for the beginning part of the unit. Um, but the very first part of this lab is to ask the user for a uh, number of sides of a shape that we ask them to think of. And then we're going to be operating on that side of shapes using our conditions. So the first thing that we do is just set up right here. It's just some code that I've already set up. So I have a say block that will ask the user to think of a shape for two seconds. It'll sit there. Uh, I then have an ask block that says how many sides does your shape have and it'll wait until the user presses enter after they type something in. And then right now it just says the answer. So um, again, just can cover that. Obviously we found say from looks, but in sensing, if we want the user to put in some kind of input, we simply use an ask block right here. So uh, this one says how many sides does your shape have? So we're gonna click it. We say it says think of shape. Um, how many sides does your shape have? I'm gonna put in four. You can see it reports that back to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that say off for now. The whole point of this lab is we wanna use a condition. Uh, conditions are a really important part of programming. They help us uh, direct the flow. Uh, they are the one of the primary parts of a logic of a program. Um, we're gonna start with an if else block, a pretty standard thing. Um, if if else blocks basically take in a condition that we give it and then decide to perform action depending on the um, you know whatever that condition may be so in this example and we're going to go to operators to help make this a little bit easier we want to check the answer that the user inputs so i'm going to say if this right here i'm going to say if and i want to check to see in the case of this lab if the answer that they give us and again this is the first uh, prompt that the lab gives us is um, basically decide whether the user is thinking of a triangle or not so we know that a triangle has three sides so the condition that i want to check right here is if the answer equals three i want to perform some output in this case i'm going to take my say block i'm going to duplicate it place one up here and one right here so in the case of this if else statement if my answer equals three obviously want to tell the user that you are thinking of a triangle. Now, of course, if the answer is not three is when this if statement is going to get invoked. So this block is going to say, if the answer equals three, do this. And it's gonna say, okay, you know what? This check was failed right here. I'm gonna move on to the else part. And no matter what, you know, even if the answer is 3.1 or the answer is four, it doesn't matter. If the answer is anything but exactly three, I'm going to say you are not thinking of a triangle. Um, and I've spelled triangle wrong. And that's how you complete uh, the part one. The part two is called name that polygon. So we're gonna expand our program from above so that instead of just deciding if a shape is a triangle or not, our program will be able to name the specific polygon. So we want our program to be able to identify at least the following shapes, uh, you know, either a three-sided, a four-sided shape, a five or a six-sided shape. So this is uh, pretty simple. We're gonna kind of expand on what we already have. So if, and I'm gonna do this one way. There's a lot of ways you might be able to do this that are probably a little bit more efficient than this. I'm just gonna set up a bunch of if else statements right here. Again, I need, I think, four specific inputs and then one that kind of handles everything else. So I'm gonna set it up like this. Um, so now the way that this is set up, and I'm gonna take this because it's gonna be very useful to me. The way that this is set up right now, it's going to go through each of these if statements in order, and that's very important to remember. So I'm gonna put answer equals three right here. So that's the same. I'm gonna duplicate that. And I'm gonna put that same block in each thing. So again, if we read the prompt of the question, it says we wanna be able to determine um, if it's three, four, five, or six sided, and then name it. So if the answer equals three, we're gonna say one thing. If the answer equals four, we're gonna say another if it's five or if it is six. So I'm going to basically take this, I'm gonna duplicate it because I know it's going to be useful to me again. And I'm gonna set it up right there. I'm going ahead and 
take this one as well and put it right here. Go ahead and delete that and delete this to keep my code clean. So again, the user asks for the user to think of a shape, ask it for the number of sides. If it's three, that's where this will actually be accurate. You are thinking of a triangle. If it's four sided, and we're gonna go ahead and click stop so I can actually edit this code. If it's four sided, I'm gonna tell the user that they are thinking of a square. If the answer is five sided, I'm going to tell them that they're thinking of a pentagon. And if the answer is six sided, we're gonna tell them that they are talking about a hexagon. So I click the wrong button there, go back, hexagon. And if it is not any of those, I'm actually just going to leave this. This is actually incorrect right here. I wanna drag this down and what do I wanna do? I wanna delete this actually. So as I have it right now, if I leave this say block on the very end, one thing you have to know is that it's going to execute that very last part regardless. So I'm gonna put error right here to see what happens. So how many sides does my shape have? We're gonna say seven. It's gonna say error. Now if I try it again, it's gonna say think of a shape and I'm going to put in six. So right now it should say you're thinking of a hexagon, but instead it just says error. One really important thing to know about these scripts is that no matter how they're set up, it's still going to go all the way down. So even if I do put in six, it, it doesn't have a chance to say you're thinking of a hexagon because it's gonna say error instead immediately after. So I'm gonna drag this down and the thing I wanna do is actually take my very last conditional and replace it with an if else statement instead. So I'm gonna take if answer equals six right here. I wanna put your thinking of a hexagon instead. And if not, I'm going to say, and I'm gonna explain this in just better detail in just a second, I do not know that shape. So basically what the script is doing, and to kind of explain how these conditions are being stepped through is that it says, we ask the user for a number, um, and then we go through what that answer could potentially be. It could be three. If so, we execute this part of the code. Um, but the way that these snap grips are set up is even though this if statement does execute, it's still going to go down to the next block and try to depend on and see what this one is as well. So even though this will get executed right here, it says if answer equals three, say you're thinking of a triangle, it'll still go and it'll say, okay, well, I know the answer is three. Is it four as well? Is it five as well? Is it six as well? And it's going to go all the way down. Um, we put the else block in there. That way we can check and say, okay, well, if answer is not three, four, five, or six, I want to say I do not know that shape. But actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this is going to error out as well. So it says, how many sides does your shape have? I'm going to put in um, seven. We can say it still does say I don't know that shape. Actually, if we try, let's say three, and bear with me. It's still going to say I do not know that shape. So what we instead want to do actually is keep this say statement right here. Drag down this if and else and you guys are going to see this live so you can see I'm kind of learning it as I go. But instead what I want to do is actually I had it right the first time. I want to use two if else statements. You can see I'm just duplicating my code as I go. I want to set this up as six and I want to drag this down and I want to pull this out and I actually want to replace this with a greater than block. So we're gonna say if it's greater than, we're gonna move answer, we're gonna go ahead and delete this and say if our number is greater than six is when we want to tell the user that we don't know the shape. So you can see I'm attaching that. I'm going to delete this. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click stop and I'm gonna play it one more time. So now it says, think of a shape. How many sides does my shape have? If I click seven, it's not gonna do anything. And that is because I have those nested. So instead now I'm going to click it. It says, think of a shape. I'm going to enter seven right here and it's going to check each one of these. It's gonna be, see that seven is not equal to three, seven is not equal to four. It's gonna go all the way down. It's gonna to get to this if statement right here. And it's gonna say, if the answer is greater than six, it's gonna tell us that it doesn't know that shape. So I click enter. It says, I don't know that shape. However, if we click, let's say if we enter four, 
it's going to tell me I'm thinking of a square. And we can see now that our script is operating properly. Uh, the one thing we do want to keep a watch out for in the future, though, is, you know, what if the user enters two or something less? What if they enter, um, you know, anything else? We kind of want to make it say unknown instead of just saying, you know, the answer is greater than six. I don't know that shape. And that is how you complete uh, the second part and the first part of lab 2.3.